Hello, and welcome to another tutorial from Cami Page Boutique. I'm Brooke Tannehill, and today I'm gonna show you how I made this fake blood snow globe tumbler with UV DTF wrap in rhinestone lid. As always, all the products I use will be listed in the description below, and you may even find a coupon code or two that saves you some coin. Also, come join our exclusive Facebook group where you can take advantage of upcoming freebies and giveaways that you aren't going to want to miss. So without further hesitation, let's go ahead and get started. For this design, I'm using a 16 ounce snow globe and I am going to grab our Lava Juice, a brand new product from Cami Page Boutique in Crime Scene as the color. And I'm gonna fill the tumbler about halfway just to make sure that I have enough of the solution for the effect. Once I have that filled the way I want it, I'm going to grab Slow Ride, and this is actually a suspension fluid solution from Cami Page Boutique that just launched, and it is going to give us the slowest flow for our blood drip. So it's just gonna give us that nice lava lamp uh, type effect, and we also have two other types of solutions. So this one is Slow Ride, so it's the slow slowest. We have Middle of the Road, and then Fast AF Boy, um, just to get the right flow for you. Then I'm gonna spray the bottom down with alcohol, and wipe it down and then we're going to seal the bottom up. I just cut a little square of packing tape. I feel like it works the best and then I really take my time making sure that it's adhered well to the bottom of the cup. That way you don't have any lifting. It's just really pushed down enough and then I'm going to move into making that more of a permanent solution with UV resin and glitter. Once the tape is secure, we're gonna finish off the butt of the cup and I'm gonna mix probably between five to 10 milliliters of UV resin with a little bit of crimson alcohol ink. Now you can skip the alcohol ink. I just like it because it just gives it a little bit of like a finished look and really kind of makes the red more vibrant and kind of pop on the bottom. It's a little detail that I like to do, but you can absolutely skip it. And then I'm going to mix in Cherry Bomb Glitter from the Drunk Flamingo. I absolutely love this red. It's a fine red, but it does have like a ton of sparkle to it. So I'm just gonna thoroughly mix it and then we're just going to add that UV resin to the bottom of the cup. Once we have the UV resin kind of scraped out of our little cup and spread onto the bottom, we're just gonna use our popsicle stick and kind of even out the, just the whole mixture that we just formed. So we're just gonna kind of take our time icing it almost like a cupcake and just trying to get it as even as possible in a perfect circle, which we really know doesn't exist in crafting unless you're using a machine to get it, but I'm just gonna kind of take my time and getting that up as close to the ridge as possible. So there, I just kind of pulled my popsicle stick at an angle and just kind of go around um, that bottom rim. But then I'll also come in with a, this is actually a coffee filter, um, and then just kind of clean up the edges just to kind of get it as finished and polished looking as possible. Then I'm going to use my UV lamp. I absolutely love this UV lamp. If you do not have it, I highly recommend that you go get it. I'm gonna link it down below. And then we have our cup fully sealed. Now here I had really shake like shake the crap out of this cup so it, that's where all like the little tiny bubbles come from like you can see I'm really really shaking it but at the end I'll show you when it's been sitting and when you slowly turn it the effect that it gives and it really brings the cup to life. Once the cup is sealed, we're gonna move on to the lid. So I like to pop out the little silicone, I don't even know what, plug for the straw to make it a little bit easier. And then I also tape off the sides of the lid. Now it'd be great if I could get in frame, um, but I'm just gonna take my time and just kind of tape them off just because I don't wanna take any kind of risk of the UV resin getting into that lip and then the cup not closing because that's just gonna be a bad day. And then I'm just using Apple Barrel black paint. You can use whatever black paint that you have. This is just acrylic. And I'm just gonna take my time kind of spreading the paint over the top of the cup. Now, this cup, the lid does have a bunch of, and I don't know why I called it a cup, I'm sorry, but the lid does have some pretty unique angles. So just take your time making sure to get as even of a layer of paint as possible because it is going to matter. And you also do want to get the top part or the inside of the where the plug goes because you will see it through the silicone because it has a little bit of um, sheen, no, sheerness, there we go, to it. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of come in here and I noticed halfway through that I had way too much paint on there. So I actually used my squeegee to kind of, um, <laughs> as a palette to get some of that extra paint off. So that's what I'm doing here because you don't want it gloppy and bumpy. It's just not cute. So just take your time, get as even of a coat as possible. And then I actually ended up doing, I think two coats before I applied the glitter. 
After the first coat was dry, I just continue to apply a second coat, and this is also going to be the adhesive that we're gonna use for our glitter. The glitter I'm using here is called Gentleman from Peachy Olive Glitters, and when I say this is an amazing black, I really mean it's an amazing black. It sparkles even though it is a black glitter, and even under epoxy, it's just, it glistens. It'd be wonderful on Galaxy tumblers, but I'm just gonna come through, I do the sides first, and then I'm just applying a nice even coat to the top, and again, just using the paint as the adhesive. But I am trying to take my time around the sides of the lid just to make sure that I'm not getting any kind of those uneven parts, especially since we're using a finer glitter because it will show through and then it's just not cute. So take your time, um, the paint, it has a little bit longer working time than if you were just to use straight Mod Podge, but you really wanna make sure that it's as even as possible and that you don't have any streaks because again, it will show. So once I'm happy with the coverage, again, I'm just gonna come in with Gentleman and I'm just kinda let it nur it, tater chip, and just not holding back because we don't care about the coverage or anything like that. I'm gonna let that dry for probably, I'm gonna say a couple of hours. I just wanted to make sure that it was nice and thoroughly coated. And then I'm going to add a little bit of this black or noir um, Brea Reese um, alcohol ink. And then I am going to add Gentleman to the UV resin. And the reason why I wanted to do this is just to add a little bit of depth to the lid but also just get some added sparkle um, I'm all about the sparkle and I mean you could probably skip this step of adding the glitter and the alcohol ink I just wanted to be bougie so I'm just gonna thoroughly mix it and then I'm gonna come through and just spread this over the top of the lid now do as I say not as I'm doing in this video wear gloves um, I don't know why I didn't I think I was just not thinking when I went through this process um, but I end up putting gloves on here in a second you are going to need them and you should have done it I should have done it at the beginning I think I just kind of was a space cadet this day um, but I'm just taking the UV resin and just evenly spreading it over the lid. Now, something else to consider is I am using a popsicle stick. Now, sometimes the pops popsicle sticks, because they are wood, can introduce more bubbles. I don't have bubble problems with this brand of UV resin, but if you do with what you're using, then I would recommend not using a popsicle stick. Use either a metal stir stick or a plastic stick or a silicone stick, um, just so that you can reduce the bubbles. But you can see here that this is going on so clearly you can see the sparkle even though it's black in the UV resin and this even has alcohol ink in there and it's still sparkling but I just use my torch really quick to pop any bubbles if they are there and then I'm going to cure this baby for about 60 seconds after the top is good and cure we're going to move on to the sides and this is where you really need gloves um, I told you I'll put them on here in a minute and maybe I don't know if I filmed it or not but I do um, but just take your time going around the sides of the lid now what happens here is that you're going to see that there's going to be a little bit of a lip that forms because we did the top first. And I knew this, I was planning on this, so it's okay, we will fix it in a little bit. But one thing that you could do that might make it a little bit easier is just do little sections of the UV resin, cure it, and then move into another section of the side. Just because it kind of did drip on me a little bit, like I got some hangy parts here and there. So definitely if you wanted to, you could just um, do like a quarter of the lid, the side of it, and then cure it and then go into the next side. Um, just because I did kind of get some inconsistency with it. I think I saved it and it came out looking beautiful, but just take your time going around um, the sides and just getting it nice and coated because you do want it as smooth as possible because we will be putting rhinestones over the sides of this lid. After it was coated, I put it under the lamp for about 60 seconds and then it was time to move into the next step. With the remaining UV resin, what we're going to do is we're going to smooth out that edge because I told you that there is going to be a little bit of a rim just because we did the top first and then we're doing the, the sides. But I want to explain why I did that because I knew that that top rim or that top kind of ridge was going to be bumpy no matter which way I did it. I wanted to add a second coat to the top so that way I could really focus on that edge and make it as smooth as possible. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of loading up my popsicle stick and then sliding it down at an angle to smooth out that edge and give me as clean and crisp of a line as possible and when I say crisp I'm really meaning just kind of smoother I don't mean I want it like a hard edge but the when you're drinking out of it it is something that you're going to see so we want to make sure that this is as polished as possible so I'm just going to take my time make sure that it's nice and coated and also notice I have a glove on so you should be proud of me and then I'm going to bake this for about 60 seconds and then it's time to move on to rhinestones 
Since this is a Halloween kind of true crime cup, I did want to do a UV DTF decal on the tumbler. So I thought this had a little too much of the blood drip on it. So I decided just to cut off the top rim, but still leave the knives and the bloody handprints and the, the kind of drips. So I'm just taking my time and just kind of using my scissors to cut out the design. You can use your X-Acto knife if that is what you're more comfortable with, but I'm just kind of working my way around out of frame again and just cutting out that extra little blood drip at the top because the whole cup's a blood drip. So this is from Vinyl Fun for everyone. This is the UV DTF Wrap 9, if you can't see it right there in screen, but I just cut it off and then what we're going to do is apply it to the glass Libby Wrap. So, or it is a Libby wrap. So we're just going to kind of line it up and the Tumblr Cradle from Cami Page Boutique works amazing for this. So it really helps you to get everything lined up. Once I have it right in place, the cradle keeps it right where you left it. And then I'm just going to peel back the backing just a little bit. I switched the other side because it was being a pain. Um, and then I'm gonna cut this off just like I do in my normal vinyl wrap. So I'm gonna cut off probably about a quarter of an inch, bring it together, and then I'm really going to push down on that little section and make sure that it's adhered really nicely to the glass tumbler. So once it's adhered, I'm going to tint the backing so that just means that I'm going to kind of separate or start it where the backing and the transfer tape are coming apart and then I'm going to use my squeegee or my hands um, I think I switched halfway through here to really apply the UV DTF decal to the tumbler I take my time because this is so sticky and these can be a pain if you don't really apply them well um, and but once you do your first couple it becomes super easy but I'm just really taking my time and pushing down the decal as tightly as possible to the tumbler, making sure to prevent any kind of bubbles. And then once I'm done, you want to take off the transfer tape. So this is a little bit different because the UV DTF is actually, the ink lives by itself. There's no kind of substrate that it's printed on. It's literally, you're putting the ink directly on to the cup and you don't have to seal it with epoxy or anything else. So um, you take off the backing and you take off the transfer tape and then it's done. So here I'm just kind of taking my time um, and removing that transfer tape and you can see that it just looks so cute with the blood drip that you can see there and that's when you don't shake the crap out of it. Now I know I lied to you a little bit because I said the rhinestones were the step before this but I hope you forgive me. Um, but what I want to do is I'm just going to be taking a little bit of this liquid fusion which was the glue I showed and then these are like micro q-tips. I'll link them down in the description but it's amazing. And the reason why I like using them is because it spreads out the glue nice and evenly so where you don't have a bunch of globs everywhere. So especially on this lid um, where it can kind of be a little uneven you just want to make sure to take and spread the glue out so that that you don't have it glopping up over your writing stones. So I'm just taking my time. Now, don't do what I did. I applied too much glue because I was thinking, oh my gosh, I'm the fastest rhinestoner in the world and I'm gonna get this all done in one fell swoop before the glue dries. No, you're not. Um, I'm not at least. So just do maybe like an inch at a time just so that you're setting yourself up for success and then you can start to apply your rhinestones. So these rhinestones are the SS22s from Vinyl Fun for Everyone. They're the glass rhinestones and they're from, um, well, I just said it, Vinyl Fun for Everyone in the black. But I'm just going to take my time and just apply them to to the outer edge of this cup. I was thinking about doing it the entire top of the lid, but I thought it would kind of be overkill. So I really like this detail and I think it came out really well. And it kind of added like a spike collar look, like look to the lid and I just absolutely love how it turns out. So just take your time applying the rhinestones to the edge and I am using a wax tool to apply the rhinestones. So what it is, it's like, it's a wax um, and it, sticks to the top of the rhinestones but allows you to pick them up and then apply them to your surface so you just stick it in there get the glass rhinestone that you want I think it also works with jellies and then you're just going to apply it to the outer rim of the lid so you want to try and keep them as straight as possible um, I tried to set this down and kind of use the table as a guide but because it was kind of more of a curved edge it didn't work as well so just take your time getting them lined up um, the other edge of this tool is um, a metal kind of um, poker I don't know what the proper term is but it allows you to kind of line them up and move them around a little bit easier than using the wax tip so um, this 
tool I have here I got at a convention. I actually don't know who it's from, but I will link one down in the description that I also use and I like a lot so that you guys can snag one if you're interested in starting rhinestones. Um, and I will tell you, I am not a professional rhinestoner at all. Um, I'm just kind of learning and sharing my experience as we go. And I thought this was a great jumping off point for this cup and I really think it set off the whole design. Once the outer edge was completed with the rhinestones, I did let it sit overnight. Then I washed the rhinestones with just like a toothbrush to lightly scrub off any of the wax that might have been left over or any globs of glue. And then this baby was done. I hope you love this snow globe because I love the effect. I cannot wait for all of you guys to try lava juice. You can see here just kind of how the it just kind of flows and gives that lava lamp appeal. I would love to know also what colors you guys would like to see because we are going to be releasing a bunch of new colors in the next coming weeks. I hope this tutorial inspires you and I can't wait to see what you create. If you have any questions about any of the steps or information, please feel free to reach out and I'll be more than happy to help. As always, thank you for watching. It really means a lot to me. If you like this tutorial, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you can see future videos. You can also ring the bell so you're notified of all future cup making goodies. Thank you again. I love you guys. Bye.